Hi, welcome to Current Topics in Finance. I'm Andy Kim, and then this is Data Science and Hedge Fund for this semester. And it will be taught by, jointly by me and HK Choi. And the roadmap to this today's class is why we combine data science and hedge fund throughout this semester. And then naturally, we will I'm talking, I'll talk about me and uh, HK Choi, my friend, who is in Hong Kong. And we're going to talk about uh, syllabus and then finally get to the starter of this semester. Now, Rise of the Machines. This is a title of Terminator movie, right? And actually, this is a non-trivial issue, especially for finance majors, because bankers are the most uh, severely affected guys um, by the invasion of artificial intelligence, or AI, as they say, right? Um, why is that the case? Because quantitative nature of their businesses, right? Numbers, numbers, numbers. Well, give me the numbers, the machine says. So that's why. But let's see. Here's an interesting case of uh, S Bank in Korea. Okay, S standing for something. Mm, I forget about what you dream about. Okay. Well, this is the biggest bank in Korea, um, and then they set up an AI division uh, pre emptively before other guys were doing it and they proudly set up and span off this division into AI company subsidiary okay and then we, they said in the newspaper proudly we established an AI team and span it off as a subsidiary as a way to pioneer fintech it's like AlphaGo of finance. You remember AlphaGo, right? That beat human Go player, Paduk player, Isedol, right? In 2016. That was a, such a huge shock to Korea as well as the rest of the world. So, uh, because the, Go was the game, is the game that people thought that's so many different ways you can uh, strategize so that it's Im impossible for machines to replicate uh, people and then beat human players there but they did it google's alphago was that right deep minds and deep learning and machine learning and ai became such a buzzword right and that directly hit financial industry and then this AI team or AI company of S Bank, they announced that they are, we are already developing into version number 2.0. Okay, uh, with the launch of S AI company in 2019, S Financial Group became the first financial holding company in Korea to introduce a company with specialized artificial intelligence capabilities. We seek to expand its business throughout a variety of AI-powered in, uh, investment consulting services. Um, they said, our AI found that the inflation rate of Zimbabwe has significant predictive power about S&P 500 index return. Wow. We don't know why, but that's what AI is about. You get unexpected predictor from nowhere. It's completely out of the conventional economic theory or human knowledge. So that's what this machine superiority comes in, superiority, right? Uh, so typical response, right? If I give this case or the news article to any of my undergraduate students in GBA or whatever, smart students, they, their response is typically like, wow, that's so sexy. And then um, I must learn AI more than anything else, even though my major is business or economics or whatever. Forget it. AI, AI, AI. But wait, I say, there are so many snake oil salesmen, right? We have to be careful about that. What does Zimbabwe inflation have to do with uh, S&P 500 return in um, backtesting setting, right? How could it be um, having such a big predictive power? Well, here is what uh, Dr. Lee Jae-hun of Deep Search uh, told us, right? Um, he also uh, got interested in this company and then, you know, uh, talked about it like this. He found that, you know, if you look at the data, 
Uh, Zimbabwe's inflation rate was tremendously high because uh, in 2008, because uh, uh, they were suffering from huge hyper hyperinflation. Um, coincidentally, the next year, S&P 500 return spiked up so much because they hit the bottom of the global financial crisis in the beginning of the year and then recovered, more than recovered, um, very, very quickly. The year, one year difference, lead lag relation, you see it, right? And then the interesting thing is Zimbabwe eventually deserted their own currency because of the hyper, hyperinflation and then they dollarized their economy so that their inflation rate got back to zero or something like that. Okay, so we see a huge jump in that inflation rate um, in 2008. The rest of the year is like near zero or something like that, minimal number, right? I.e., this is an outlier that drives the regression result to a certain direction. And if you look at test, uh, if you test with the back data only, okay, you can find naturally, right, mechanically, a significant predictive power, but is that informative and is that useful, right, is a very important question. We are trying to develop, they say, right, in AI, S Bank's AI team, we are trying to develop another AI that explains why Zimbabwe's inflation is important. Hmm, kind of. We are developing an interpreter machine. And we say what? I say, good luck. Good luck. All right? Um, as it turns out, uh, you know, uh, another friend of mine visited that company, okay, and then found out there are like, uh, you know, their AI team is driven by math PhDs at the heart or computer science PhDs at the heart or center. Uh, and then they were supported by econ majors and business majors over there. Um, those business majors or econ majors, they, they got master's degree or um, undergraduate degrees, their supporting function. Um, but they were busily doing data mining, my friend said, but they don't seem to reach that intuition hitting level yet. Why? Right? Zimbabwe thing, right? If you delve into the data a little bit more, then you realize, yeah, come on, this is just a coincidental uh, happening. Okay? It's not going to happen again and again and again. What you want to get at is the repetitive data generating process that enables you to stably predict what's going to happen in the future. For that purpose, you need a solid understanding of economics, psychology, and statistics. Why economics and psychology? Because the relation between money and human is about, i.e. the banking is about, you know, the people and the money and either economic incentive is driving it or psychological bias and instinct is driving it, okay? Those two things you have to have solid understanding. That's why I say back to basics, haste makes waste. Don't jump into AI in such a uh, hasty ways. Rather, solidify your study in economics and mathematical economics and psychology, which is behavioral finance, right? Um, those guys in the supporting function, they don't have solid training in behavioral finance. That's why they cannot talk to their bosses. And their bosses, math PhDs, have a, you know, the communication skill of them, right? Uh, you can pretty much picture what's going on there. Now, um, lack of communications and then going their own way, it's just going too wild, nowhere, going nowhere, right? Um, the guys in the industry, they don't even know what the heck they are doing there. And then they are trying to develop into version number two with an interpreter machine. Do you need interpreter machine for that one? Come on. Are you trying to waste more money on that? Okay. I see something fishy going on over there, right? So, econ psychology, once you have this training solid, what you need is a training in statistics or econometrics, okay? Um, and so that's why we need this course, econ psych plus statistics, okay? 
Um, this course is to combine these three and lead you to the world of Global Hedge Fund. Um, Andy Kim, me, will guide you in the first part, Econ, Psych and Statistics, over the next two months as an academician in Korea. And my good friend, Hyungyu Choi or HK Choi in Hong Kong Poly University, Polytech University, will guide you in the second part. Uh, over one month, right, in November, with his rich experience as a hedge fund manager in Hong Kong. Um, using our language, R, right, we will learn the basics of data science and its application to business, including finance. Including finance is an important part, right? Not just only finance, but it's rather spread around, okay? You will see why. Team project uh, of presenting your unique quantitative trading strategy will be the most important part in this class. Last bullet point, 40% of your grade comes from your final project, quantitative trading idea generation, yes. So essentially this is finance class focused on hedge fund, but before that we are um, solidifying our understanding about econometrics, which is econ plus psychology plus statistics over here. All right, introduction about me. Who are you, Andy Kim? Right, that's me. Um, I am the program chair of global administration of SKKU, the oldest university in Asia. And then this is the flagship undergraduate program, so I'm very honored to be there. And then here I am the associate professor of finance, um, and then you can see my contact information down there, right? My phone number and the email address. Yeah, of course. And then uh, to briefly or extensively rather uh, in, introduce about me. Well, I've been working as a program chair uh, for two term, uh, two year term, two year terms, right? Um, since nine, uh, last year, so this is my last year. And then uh, before that, um, professor of finance, I was working here, I've been working here since 2015, uh, so it's my sixth year. And um, this is my new ambitious attempt to develop one new course about data science because I'm very interested in it. I've been to working with big data in behavioral finance and a lot of the applications have been there. So why don't I you know, go together with you and then brush up my memories and then work together with you? Um, and then R coding, all these kind of things. Well, R is kind of new to me, right? I honestly speaking, I was 100% trained in SAS, S-A-S. Um, so it's going to be challenging for me to teach you guys our codings, but this is the de facto, the language of big data. And I have to adapt to this, this environment, uh, together with you, just like you guys. So I will put myself out of my comfort zone into some promising, more promising and risky area. So let's go, right? That's my spirit. Now, before coming to uh, SKKU, I worked for NTU, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore from 2009 to 14. It was a great experience over there. Um, and then there, uh, I started to study behavioral finance. Previously, in my PhD program that I graduated in 2009 in University of Minnesota, we're going to talk about that school a little later, but I was totally trained in um, neoclassical economics way, okay? Not in behavioral finance, um, but Singapore changed me, okay? Uh, when I was in the job market 2008 and nine, right? That uh, there was a huge global financial crisis, by the way, so that I had to uh, send my application to more than a hundred different universities all around the world. And uh, because of the financial crisis, not only the banks were screwed up, but the, many of the universities, like about half of them, got screwed up in their budgets and so that they said, no, we are not going to hire anybody uh, this year. I'm, I'm sorry, Andy. Okay. But uh, fortunately, I got an, a job offer from uh, University of Cambridge in Britain, just like Oxford and Cambridge, right? Um, so I was about to go there, but, uh, but at the last moment, the NTU in Singapore gave me a much better offer. 
and uh, rich compensation, right? Th three times the salary or something, okay? So I was very happy to get that. And at that time, you know, I, I, you know, I was together with my family instead of being alone as a bachelor or something. So I had to feed my you know, wife and kids. So obviously, my best choice was to go to Singapore. That's one of the best choices I've ever made in my whole life, actually. Um, Singapore was such a diverse environment in terms of uh, nationality and uh, so uh, and then plus um, those K-pop was becoming hot in fashion it's, even it's until now it's hot you see Gangnam style right even before that so my kids felt like they are they are majorities and then they never felt like minority at all and then uh, all those kids around them were you know asking you know can you translate this into korean language or something like that or back to english like that so we had such a great time in singapore plus i was surrounded by so many great finance scholars like Professor Chungu Kang and Steve Dimak and then you know uh, uh, Trishan uh, Wei and then all these guys, right? Very productive environment in Singapore and very innovative. So I like that experience. Um, I carry that spirit into uh, SKKU. I I hope, right? Um, uh, so that's uh, that. Before that, I had my MBA at the University of Minnesota. And then before that, I had work experience at Bank of America Seoul branch as a corporate credit analyst in their global corporate and investment banking division. Um, and then that was a time when I met um, Professor Hyung Kyu Choi, HK Choi, who is teaching, the, uh, who will be teaching this course from November on, right? He was a good friend of mine. Um, I told you about him during my introduction, uh, introductory videos, right? Um, and then, before that, I got my BA degree at the Yonsei University, and during my undergraduate period, I was more into marketing because that was much more fun and then they needed a lot of uh, creativities. I, and a lot more colorful experience was there. Um, the interesting thing is I also, you know, when I was in the job market in my undergraduate period, 1998 to 9, that was uh, around the time of uh, East Asian financial crisis. So I had to send out my resume to hundreds of different places. Uh, eventually, uh, and then luckily, I got a job offer from uh, Samsung Life Insurance and then uh, L'Oreal marketing team and then Bank of America like that. So I thought it is my mission to work for Bank of America, the best institution, financial institution in the world, to learn about their solid corporate credit decision-making process so that later on I would become a finance professor and then so that I would be able to teach my guys uh, as the best banker in the world later on. So that was my, have been my career dream. Luckily, I was able to, you know, follow that dream until now. Okay, thank God. Okay, anyway, so that's a long introduction about myself, but it's not the end. My teaching areas is behavioral finance and fintech, data science and finance this year, and then intermediate corporate finance or valuation for a long, long, long time. Um, and then international finance since last semester, you can see my uh, in uh, YouTube teaching in the following link called simplytaught.com. Okay, there the Arizona State University's Atif Ikram, Professor Ikram, uh, found me in the YouTube. Oh, you got interesting teaching over there. That's a fun stuff. So let me connect your lecture to each chapter of Un and Resnik, our textbook over there. So. I was very thankful and very lucky to be introduced by him. So I hope you like that in case you are interested in international financial management. By the way, that's going to be in the spring semester again next year. Okay. Other than teaching in credits like this uh, outside extracurricular, I also have been involved with the CFA Research Challenge event ever since I was in Singapore. Um, I supervised many students over there. Um, at NTU and uh, SKKU. It's a great opportunity for you guys to meet the experts in the industry, especially in the equity research part. Well, equity research valuation is kind of, I mean, it is related to this hedge fund, but this quantitative hedge funds is, the approach is quite different. While the equity research is about the DCF or economic fundamentals for 
each and every company, right? Let's get down to deeper into one company and analyze it and uh, predict their cash flows, right? Quantitative analysis over here, they all, we almost, you know, they don't talk about each company's specific character or cash flow, okay? Instead, this is thousands of stocks and hundreds of stocks buying and selling based on some kind of rules, okay? Um, momentum. Let's look at the past performance over the last 12 months and then the best performing 10%, well, we're going to buy it. And best, worst performing 10%, we're going to short sell those guys. That's very simple idea of that a trend will sustain in their uh, stock price kind of things, right? So um, very different approach compared to valuation, right? So that's what I'm trying to say. Well, my research interest is in behavioral finance using very, very unconventional data. For example, Gangnam Style uh, paper that I uh, published before, which was introduced by Bloomberg TV in the United States and PBS television. Um, there I used the flash map data, okay, where, in which country and which location, and then the geographical um, coordinates, right? And then connect this into uh, connect this with the individual investors' trading data, second by second, okay, in two thousand different branches in Korea. Again, the geographical coordinates are linked, okay. So big data approach was there, and then recently I've been studying about the facial masculinity of the CEOs in uh, where we used. Uh, artificial intelli intelligence technology to uh, measure the facial masculinity by plotting 68 different dots in your faces. Any picture you just insert it, upload it, and then you will get a standardized point, okay? Then you get the coordinates of it and then measure the ma masculinity. The idea is that your masculinity in your face is related to your risk choices because of the hormone called, called testosterone. Now, um, all this kind of unconventional big data turns me on, okay? That's why I'm more and more into this data science part, and I want to go together with you, okay? That's my research area. Uh, Professor H.K. Choi, uh, he will introduce uh, himself, and then he's, he will do his part oh, in the second video. You're going to watch it. But just briefly, he's got PhD in Hong Kong Poly University because he has been working in Hong Kong for a long time. And then he has 20 years of work experience, right? Um, MBA Wharton, right? And then BA in Sogang University. And then he worked at Quad Capital Management as the CEO of Hong Kong uh, Affiliation. And then East Eaton Park, right? The, one of the biggest hedge funds in the world. He worked there. And then Citigroup, Global Capital market Asia and then Bank of America before um, so that's pr uh, brief introduction about him and uh, um, actually it turns out right uh, HK Choi some of you must have met him or your alumni right because uh, GBA program we do uh, we've been doing global career tour to various cities like uh, in uh, global financial centers like Hong Kong and Singapore. And in 2018, our students visited his office, right, um, in his company. And then he gave a nice presentation about the uh, job he is doing. And then he treated you guys with a great dinner in a great place, right, in Hong Kong. So you must remember him. And so uh, the next one is about the syllabus of this course, right? Prerequisite, financial management, please, and statistics, okay? Um, suggested course to uh, take concurrently, well, econometrics, investments, and derivatives, and so on, right? You can take those. And the textbook, okay, is Business Data Science by Matt Taddy. Not Mac Daddy, but Matt Taddy, yes. Um, where is his book? Oh, over there. Anyway, so you see that in the screen, right? Why did I pick this guy's book? Well, 
uh, before that, I, let me t tell you this. I will try to pick and choose the topics necessary for quantitative trading and behavioral finance research. Okay, um, Matt Taddy is the biggest guy in data science, business data science. Why? Because he's working as a chief data scientist in Amazon.com. Come on. And then before that, Microsoft, right? And before that, he was a professor at the University of Chicago. Okay. What more do you want, right? So let's learn from the best guy is the spirit of this class, right? Um, at least for the book and for HK Troy, right? Not me. Right? Um, but this is it. So let's learn from it. And the book is very uh, written in a reader friendly manner, right? Um, the thing is, um, the, it covers various topics in business. So not just in finance, but also in marketing and uh, other subjects like operations and strategy will be there. But don't get freaked out. Okay, We are all finance majors anyway. And then to the extent that we need it, we're going to pick up. I'm going to pick up. And then um, you, may, you may wonder, why not choose a domain specific textbook like something like financial data science, blah, blah, blah. Number one, good luck. <laughs> there is a, a very difficult book, uh, uh, financial data, uh, machine learning, right, like this, which requires a PhD level of uh, math understanding, right? Good luck. Uh, not for us. Um, number two, well, learning from the best guys in the book, right? Um, number three, or number two over here in the bullet point, you never know what you're gonna get in your life. Come on, you're undergraduate students, right? Young age. Um, you're not fixed as a finance guy yet in your career, okay? You wish, you wish, but it's not the end. You're like a white paper, okay? You're just like a white paper when you get a job. So much so that when your employers draw a picture, it will be on your uh, on your paper, so you will be a, you should be able to adapt to new environment anyway. Could it be marketing? Could it be something uh, that you've you know, never knew before, right? Um, narrowing down too early is risky. Okay, so I want you to you know have have some sense of marketing anyway, right? Um, and then quantitative. Uh, investment ideas, right? In hedge fund, you will see in the introduction by H.K. Choi that some of these quantitative investment strategy idea is just really cr right, crazy, you will say, right? out of the blue. How could you think about that? Very creative, okay? If you narrow down yourself to finance, 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 number, number, number only, then it will kill your creativity. So fresh up your mind with, you know, different, uh, uh, different disciplines like uh, marketing or a little bit, right? Here and there will widen your scope and then you can breathe. Your brain will be breathing, right? So that you can be more creative. Um, you never know what you're going to get either in your career or in your hedge fund career as well. So that's why uh, this is going to be a fantastic book, I think. Uh, other textbooks uh, HK Choi strongly suggests is Zvi Baudier's book, um, Essentials of Investment, and Lassie Peterson's book, Efficiently Inefficient. Um, awfully interesting book. I strongly suggest you, we strongly suggest you to get it and then read it, right? Um, Asset management business, if you are interested in jobs in 자산운용사, right? You must read those things. Um, well, Andy Kim, me, will mostly, um, the class format, right? Class format, right. 100% online based. I know after the survey that you guys, GBA guys, prefer 100% online. Um, you hate something in between, right? Offline plus online mixed it. No way, I know. So 100% online. Um, my part, mostly pre-recorded and uploaded on iCampus, uh, perhaps on YouTube. Andy may invite some guest lecturers from Hong Kong on October 8th and 15th. Um, they are different from HK Choi, right? Um, 
at which time it will be real-time Zoom based. So mark your calendar over there. I know that you hate a uh, real-time based WebEx meeting or Zoom meeting, but, but, but this is important for you to get exposure to Hong Kong, okay? And get to know the experts, the very best guys in the field, okay? Um, who knows, later on in your life, you will, you know, run across them and then say hi and then it develops into much better opportunities, right? So it's all about meeting people, that's why. Um, bear with me. Now, number two, HK Choi, Professor Choi will do real-time online Zoom class from Hong Kong. Okay, so that you would be able to directly interact. I know I told you you don't like this uh, real time based WebEx meeting, but Zoom will be much better, he said, right? In connectivity. I hope that happens. I hope that is the case. And then it will be much more lively. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, class hours and classrooms, yeah. Uh, of course, what do you want for classroom? This is Corona-19 virus period, so online basis. But if it is going to be offline, our uh, classroom was supposed to be International Hall 1110. Okay, now, uh, class hour, um, Thursday morning. Okay, Web uh, the, 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 the real-time Zoom-based classes, please secure your Thursday morning section. Okay, no excuse. If you don't like it, you can drop it. Okay, um, uh, course assessment, right? Course assessment, final exam, wait, 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 midterm exam, final exam, 15 and 25 percent. And then that comes up to be like what 40 percent, right? Final team project is as much as 40 percent in combination, 80 percent. Cumulatively, and then homework, 10%, participation and attendance, 10%, all in all, 100% of your grade. Okay, make sense? Now, grading distribution, yeah, this is, you know, English-based uh, class, so 50%, uh, okay, A or A+, 50%, and then the worst, the remaining 50%, okay, that's the basic rule. Um, the overall distribution, yeah, I'm expanding myself, I have to shrink down, okay. Uh, overall distribution of grades remain the sole authority of the instructor, Z, me and him, okay. Once the final course grades are posted on the GLS system, they are final, okay. Never ask for a higher grade. So, uh, such solicitation may result in punishment, lower grade, because the person is asking for favoritism, sacrificing his or her friends, neighbors, and etc. So, besides, Kim Young Nan law forbids you, okay, from asking it. By the way, Kim Young Nan is never my sister, uh, even though I am Kim Young Han, uh, only one character difference in Korean language. I don't know her, she doesn't know me, who are you, huh? Kind of things, right? Uh, midterm exam, uh, final exam, 15-25%. In case of online exam, yes, it will be, I, I guess, <sighs> due to the Corona-19, but let's see. Uh, rather, it will be a more of essay-based take-home exam, 48 hours, okay? Let me state it right now so that you will not get confused. Yeah, 48 hours, report kind of things on your own honor code strict honor code okay you won't have time to talk to each other by the way i'm gonna make sure about it uh, and then in case offline exam is possible closed book you need a calculator but no telecommunication device please um final team project 40 percent it's going to be about quantitative trading strategy to make money as hedge fund managers and detail will be explained by HK Choi in his first class material. You're going to see it in the iCampus. Um, homework 10%, right? Oh, by the way, the final, final project, both me and HK Choi will grade you guys, right? So don't worry, okay? Um, 
um, homework 10%, there will be five to six of homework assignments throughout the semester. And then the, uh, it's going to be rather short, right? Uh, half of it will be individual homework. I'm going to specify, right? Tell you. And half of it will be group-based homework. Should be a little bit longer. You may need to write some R codes and write up short and short analysis, right? Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, right? So that's why. Participation and attendance, 10% of your grade. You should click and watch Andy Kim's video through iCampus to make sure that your attendance is recognized. iCampus, okay? Even if I upload this thing in the YouTube, clicking on simply on YouTube does not help your attendance, okay? So click it through iCampus on in the due week, in that legitimate week. Once the week is passed, no chance. <laughs> you will be able to watch it on the YouTube, but it's not going to help your attendance. And you're going to get some marks off. You don't want that happen. Well, click on iCampus in time. For Zoom-based classes, guest speakers and HK Choice class, well, me, I will manually check your attendance or my TA. We'll do that. Um, and then whenever, okay, participation and attendance keeping on, right? Whenever you have questions to us, me or HK Choi, email us to both of us using CC function. Which one comes first? Which comes first? Uh, comes last? I don't care. Masangumji, uh, 마음의 상처 안 받아요. Don't worry. Um, with the title of GBA CTF questions, blah, blah, blah. Your title has to be in the square bracket so that I'm, I, me and him, we are flooded with other emails, literally hundreds of emails. <sighs> so much work. So um, distinguish yourself, right? With the square bracket, GBA CTF question, and then blah, blah, blah. And then start with your greeting. Hi, I am John, John Smith taking GBA CTF. Okay, and start your questions like that. Okay, let us know your name. Okay, it's all about spreading your good name to other people, right? And it is business etiquette to first say, hi, I am somebody, somebody, and good to meet you, right? All the time. And finish your email with what? Thank you, right? Uh, it's not just because I'm your professor, but because to make it your habit to write a good English communication emails, right? Um, so that you will be able to get a job anywhere, right? Um, yeah. Uh, it's all about, yeah, yeah, yeah. If your questions add value to the class, we will add participation grade to you. Yes. Um, but don't flood us with your emails. If, you, if not value adding, we will not add any points. Okay. And not add any points. Um, but yeah, it helps, right? Good. Um, courtesy during real time, uh, real time zoom class, make sure you turn off your microphone during your lecturers, the lecturer's speech not to disturb other students learning okay uh those flushing sound of your toilet bowl all these kind of things makes it funny or awkward during the classroom okay if you happen to make this kind of things happen through your microphone um your participation grade will be off right to prevent this what do you have to do this thing happened, blah, happened. Then to make up for this, you have to dance like 10 seconds. It could be like a Kyungni and Chum like this and Michael Jackson or whatever dance move, right? Like what, what you do in your TikTok. Show us, right? So that at least we're going to have fun in our class, right? Um, so that's our policy. Um, coding, R, yes. No Python. I say, <laughs> no other language. I know it's painful. The book is about, okay, the book is based on R, uh, not this one, um, that the, the business data science is about R. 
So let's let's master it first, okay? Some of you may be more comfortable with Python. I know. Me, I'm more comfortable with SAS. Uh, I also learned Python last semester. And right now I have to throw everything and then just jump into R. It's even more painful for me, okay? <laughs> So, uh, but for the sake of com uh, comparability in grading, we will focus on R. If you so desire to work with Python, do it as an additional work for bonus point, which is 3% of your score. Okay, homework score or whatever team project score, um, adding only 3%, right? Multiplied by 1.03, right? Uh, if you so desire, then go ahead. Okay, but to get this 3% up, your R coding has to be perfect. And then I will run your code and make sure it gives me the same result. If it does not give me the same result, yet you provided Python code and say, here I got the perfect, the perfect coding for you know result over there, no chance. First, make it with R. This is our promise. If you don't like it, you can drop this class. Okay. Um, Homework project, once the R is perfect, then your Python will add only 3% of your grade. Um, R coding tutorials and books, you're flooded with this then, okay? Over the internet, YouTube, Google, Naver, whatever, yeah. Make sure you familiarize with R Studio environment because I'm working with R Studio. Uh, the book is, you know, books I personally use is Korean language based, but it should not matter. Uh, you would find many English based books as well. Don't complain simply because I, I'm not using English books, but uh, Korean books for my personal R training, okay? Um, look at the syllabus for R, R reference books. And then, very tentative class schedule looks like this. And it may, and it will, it shall change. Because this is my first attempt to make this course, okay? Uh, this is our ambitious uh, schedule, okay? Let's see. Intro, first week. Second week, uh, data science. DS stands for business data science book. Chapter one, two, right? Like this. So chapter one, uncertainty, and then the false discovery rate kind of things we're going to study, and uh, the regression part we're going to study by that one. And given that we are finance guys, it reminds me of what? Capital asset pricing model, that regressions, right? The beta. Yes, we're going to talk about that. And for that part, efficient market hypothesis and their empirical evidences. And then testing of these empirical evidences, right? EMH. Uh, we're going to go through that part in the second week, uh, if time permits. But if not, we're going to flood into uh, week three. And there we're going to uh, study about the cases or the uh, evidences against EMH, right? Empirical evidence against EMH, January effect, calendar effect, all these kind of things. And then if time permits, maybe momentum kind of things. Then we're going to move on to chapter three of the book, which is about regularization and AIC and BIC. What is that about? It's about uh, uh, variable selection and model selection. Okay. Uh, uh, Akaike criteria, information criteria, and Bayesian information criteria kind of things. The thing is, we are, we are flooded with those data, dimensionality matters, right? The curse of dimensionality is a serious problem so that we have to be able to be parsimonious. What do you mean parsimonious? You should be able to tell the story with minimal degree of uh, explanatory variables, right? Not with millions of variables like Zimbabwe kind of things, right? Uh, Zimbabwe's inflation rate. Sorry to the Zimbabwe people. I'm talking about the inflation rate over there, right? Um, then we're going to study a little bit about testing capital structure theories. What the heck is that? It's, isn't that corporate finance thing? Yes, it is. In corporate finance, capital structure is perhaps the most important theories of all. And there, uh, various theories were there, and then various explanatory variables were there to explain the variation in debt to equity ratio okay capital structure um, what kind of variables are you going to use well let's be parsimonious there we're going to think about the these criteria so regularization will be like that 
And then the next two, uh, the following week is no class, holidays, because it's the birthday of Confucius or Gongjanim or Confucius, Confucius, right? Gongzi, um, Gongjanim. Uh, we are Asia's oldest university, as I told you, and then we are based on that Confucianism uh, in our um, common Asian value, right? So he's the father figure. What do you say the the godfather of this idea, so we are celebrating his birthday. Perhaps this is the only school in the whole world that is celebrating and taking the whole week off, right? Right, so don't come to class or don't click my class, right? <laughs> um, unless you so desire. And actually, you can spread my class if I upload it on the YouTube and then s share it with your friends so that I, be I become a YouTube star, global star, hopefully, yes! Subscribe and like is you know, what we need. Yeah. Now, uh, the following week, it will be about AI in FinTech, which is Chapter 9. Why do you fly to Chapter 9? Well, because we have Industry Showcase coming from Tencent. Mr. Tim Lung will lead you uh, for an hour over there, right? Artificial intelligence in fin FinTech. How do we do that? Well, in Tencent, Hong Kong or Shenzhen, right, more specifically. He's going to talk about it uh, through Zoom. He's my good old friend during my undergraduate period. Um, so he's a fantastic guy with a lot of experience in uh, Microsoft and then uh, uh, Tencent. So you're going to like his class very much. Um, the following week, right, we're going to talk about uh, what? Asset allocation in hedge fund business or asset management business, right? Asset allocation is a hard stuff, hard issue in this uh, investment banking uh, asset management field these days. So we don't want to touch on that. For that part, for that part, um, the industry showcase will be done by Dr. Song Changhuan or Changhuan Song of Invesco. Invesco is one of the biggest mutual funds in the whole world. Okay, um, Changhuan Song. Well, I'm gonna talk about him a little later. Uh, uh, let's do it like right here. Right, Changhuan Song has been working there in Hong Kong and then was working for BlackRock, the biggest asset manager in the whole world. Right for a long time in San Francisco and Hong Kong. And then he also, he also worked at Samsung um, Asset Management Hong Kong for a long time. Extensive work experience, and perhaps the number one guy. I mean, I believe he's, he's the number one guy in our generation in this field. So, and plus he has been, you know, involved with CFA Institute's research challenges for a long, long time. And then he's, you know, he, a lot of uh, uh, SKKU students learned from him previously. So I, I think, I believe you're going to love him very much. And, um, right. Right after that, we're going to take a uh, midterm exam. And then after midterm exam, um, chapter seven, factorization will be there. We're going to learn about uh, principal component analysis and then uh, size to uh, size and book to market factor kind of things. How to think about, interpret this factor in your expected returns, right? In your stock is a big, big, big issue. Quantitative trading basics, right? So factor uh, analysis kind of things, we're going to touch on that issue, but we're going to uh, mostly focus our study on size and book to market kind of things, right? Um, value investing and the sentiment index, right? Sentiment index, like looking at uh, IPO frequencies and those dollar amounts going into that uh, bubble stocks and all these kind of things, right? measured in various ways and the various uh, measures and numbers uh, predict this kind of goes together with this kind of bubble sentiment how do we extract those common factors out of it principal component analysis is the thing okay so we're going to touch on that issue um the next week is going to be about text as data even though it is november time i'm gonna uh, spend one more week with you uh, because it's going to be about media and finance, which is my topic. <laughs>
over there, right? The language tone, natural language processing, and then how is it related to expected return, uh, not the expected return, but the uh, stock returns, right? And then the bubbles related to media. Uh, so we're going to uh, work on that, okay, using various uh, uh, data and uh, studies, right? And then, of course, throughout this, right, I'm going to throw you some academic research papers, okay? Academic research papers, don't get freaked out, okay? Don't get freaked out because, uh, simply because that's tough. Why do I throw out those uh, academic research papers in top journals or top conferences? Because that is going to be, that is, those uh, ideas in the top research papers are already applied in hedge funds. And some of the important jobs for hedge fund advisors, managers, is to replicate, to follow those state-of-the-art research paper on their own, backtesting, and then see if, real, if it really happens or not using past data. So to be able to work for hedge funds in the future, you should be able to digest or at least courageous enough to see and read it off and then understand those key ideas over there. Usually those ideas that I suggest to you is not too much difficult, is something understandable for reasonably smart undergraduate students. Fun papers actually, Twitter and finance, or Google search volume and uh, uh, finance, right? Those kind of things, you know, very approachable. Number two, if you look at the movie called what? Beautiful Mind, right? The Beautiful Mind, A Beautiful Mind, um, wait a minute, yeah, um, there they say, you know, in Princeton University, in undergraduate math program, the professors say to the fresh undergraduate guys, freshman guys, and say what? You are, you are the smartest guys in the world, so you should be ready to read and write original academic research papers. That's their training. And you should be the ones, too to challenge those guys anyway. Rather ambitious target, I know, but we're going to make it. So get ready. We're going to enjoy, enjoy that part, right? Um, by the way, the battery is almost off. So just a minute. All right. All right. So after midterm, right after week eight and nine, then finally, uh, HK Choi will come and teach you, right? Hedge fund one, two, three, four, overview of hedge fund strategies, equity strategies, macro strategies, and arbitrage and equity valuation. Then finally, in week 14, you're going to present yourself, right? 20 minutes presentation, 15 minutes presentation, five minutes Q&A, okay? Uh, so that's it. And then final exam. Right. Uh, Dr. Song chang I told you about it. HK's intro will follow, right? So I hope you enjoy it and then see you in the next uh, video. Thanks for watching.